Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly talk about why it's so important to set goals when you're collecting and buying and selling Pokemon cards. Um, for me personally, um, as I mentioned in the last video, I started Pokemon because I wanted to just make money. That kind of is still really true, but I also really do enjoy collecting it, of course. Um, but if you don't have any set goals or anything, you know, your, your mind isn't set on any one collection goal, or you don't know why exactly you're collecting, it's pretty easy to feel like you don't have any collection at all, or to feel like your collection is really messy or without focus. Um, because if you can see here, my collection, this is my entire collection. I have a binder, I have a pack of first edition Neo Genesis, I have some cards I need to get graded, I have a Ken Griffey Jr. card, I have an empty first edition Neo Genesis box, I have three cards that I graded myself, and then I have a big stack, a little off screen, about... 20 cards that I bought. All of these were less than $100 each. Most of them were less than $40 each. The exclusion being this, which I spent... Can you even see what that is? There you go. Trainer deck B, Squirtle. Really bad lighting right now. This was $500. So this is an outlier. Since my priority is buying cards to get them graded to sell them, that's the, that's the main focus of how I'm trying to make my money um, I don't want to spend a lot of money on anything other than that right because the more you put in the more you get out but as you can see I have a lot of cards back here that are gonna get graded I have about 150 these are all my ancient muse that I still need to get graded there's about 40 of them here maybe 30 so you have to think why are you collecting you know, are you just doing it to collect? Or are you just doing it for fun? Um, I also buy, anytime I see a Shadowless card in like a card shop, I always pick them up. And as you'll see in the binder, there's definitely some more Shadowless. These are all play, moderate play for the most part. Really gorgeous. Maybe I'll get another complete set of that at some point. Also, if I ever see any Komiya when I'm opening packs or when I'm at a card shop, I, one of my favorite artists, really unique art style, colored pencil, always has people in the background of his cards. Sorry, this lighting was really awful. Um, but if you're doing it where you're trying to make money, and if you're just pouring all of your money into buying cards and then shipping them out to PSA and then waiting six to nine months or more to get your cards back you know if you ever take time to sit and think about what your collection actually consists of you're probably going to feel pretty depressed about it which is why i personally started this binder which i'm gonna look through in just a moment um but like you, know, you also have to think of your your goals not with just what you want to collect, but why you're collecting what your end game is, right? Personally, my goal is to get to a point where I can work at my full-time job one day a week because they pay for my schooling if I work there. So I'll work there one day a week. Sorry, I feel a little sick today. One day a week at my job, so they pay for my school, and then I'll just live off of Pokemon money in my one day a week at school or at work, and then full-time school, and then just kind of take it from there. So you have to kind of think of, if you're doing it for money, which you might be if you're looking at this video, because this is going to be mostly money-based and, you know, that kind of garbage, you know, flipping and all that. So let's just grab this, and we can look at the actual binder, because I don't know how to do it any other way. So here we have a incomplete shadowless set. So for me, it's important that my goal, this is my main goal that I'm working on now, um, 
Everything in here is going to be played, heavy played, moderate play. We have a couple first editions that you'll see. Shadowless, first edition Raichu, first edition Zapdos. And then everything, so all of the hollows are played. All of the Shadowless are going to be near mint to mint. We can see if we just pull out. Dratini, little whitening at the top. Other than that, maybe a little whitening on the bottom. So this is my, my collecting goal, right? So that if I ever think, wow, I have 400 cards of PSA. I have 150, all these aren't even like expensive cards. These are mostly like, that's CP6, CP6. It's probably non hollow Jungle, first edition, first edition Neo Genesis, not hollow, and then base set, not hollows. So n n there are no hollows in here except for from CP6, which aren't that expensive right now. And then a bunch of ancient Muse, right? So when I think, wow, I've spent all this money, I've spent all this time on grading, you know, where's my reward? Well, that's this for now. And that makes me you know, happy for the time being. We got red cheeks and yellow cheeks, shadowless. And you have to think, again, why are you doing this? You know, are you just in it to collect? Um, or are you in it for the money? And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't think that just because you want to make money off Pokemon that makes you a bad person. There's a lot of money in Pokemon right now. And then here we have base set uh, unlimited. I don't have the Charizard right now because at the moment I can't justify spending the, the money to buy a base set unlimited Charizard. I'm also missing, of course, the Shadowless Charizard, Blastoise, Clefairy, and then a few others, including Venusaur, I think. So I don't have the uh, base set limited because again, at the moment, my focus is on getting cards graded, getting getting them at the door and trying to get them back to me as soon as I can. We have all the hollows. Most of this is gonna be played condition, maybe light play, moderate play. Look at that. Um, it's easy to think because if you listen to, you know, maybe some like real collectors, right, who say that they're not in it for the money, it's, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't know if I believe them. Like, they, they can be not in it for the money, of course, but a lot of people say, like, I don't even care about how much this card costs. I don't even care. Japanese base set. This is one of my all-time favorite cards, Japanese base set Alakazam. Something about it is just something about like the gold lettering here and the gold of him and the hollow. Ah, so good. Um, and then this is basically where the binder stops for the most part. I do have some more stuff in the end. I still need to finish my Japanese base set non hollows. I have about half of them. I'm missing a lot. But there's just so much money in it right now that, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm just a poor little boy, but I can't see how you can really care about the amount of money that's in the hobby right now. Personally, I mean, there are a couple cards that I don't care how much they cost that are in my collection. Um, for example, I mentioned it in the last video, I believe. This card was the first card my girlfriend ever pulled out of her first ever pack, and it got the 10. So... You know, this is what, a $1,300 card, I believe? You know, if someone offered me 2500 for it, I'd probably turn them down, which is maybe stupid. But, you know, it's just sentimental, so I get that. Um, and there's some cards that I wouldn't want to sell unless it was way over market, which means that it wouldn't sell. For example, I had the PSA 1 No Rarity Japanese uh, base at Charizard, and that I got for $800, and then I posted it on eBay for $6,900, uh, just because 
you know, I wanted the views on the eBay page and it would help drive traffic. And then guess what? I get an offer for $5,000. So I had to take it just because, oh, there's a print line on that. Just because that's so much money that I couldn't see myself turning it down. But we can hop back to the end of the binder. Basically, all I'm saying is that if you are trying to, you know, make money off of this, then you're going to need to set goals or else you might find yourself burning out because one day you'll look and if I didn't have this binder, you know, what am I left with? I'm left with a small stack of Shadowless cards, one Neogenesis pack, 20 graded cards, a Ken Griffey Jr., an empty box, and then a bunch of non hollows right? So I could see myself really getting depressed and really not wanting to continue this because it's hard to think about the 400 plus cards you have at PSA if you don't have something to look at, right? Something that you can say, look, I worked hard and now I have something in my collection. Here we have my Lugia page, got Crystal Lugia, one of my all-time favorite cards. First edition, New Genesis Lugia, my all-time favorite card. Absolutely perfect. Southern Island set, all near mint to mint. Got this way before the price spiked way too much. Near mint to mint, got it for about a hundred bucks. And then all the reverse hollows of the Dragonite line from EX Team Rocket Returns. And again, I'm missing, I wanna get a first edition hollow fossil Dragonite there. And I wanna swap these out, you know, this for the first edition hollow, and this for the first edition non hollow. Get first edition base, first edition base. But again, can't really justify the price right now when I'm trying to just put so much money at the moment into grading and buying cards and sourcing the cards or whatever. Um, but, you know, having some cards like this that I can just go back to and think, holy moly, you know, like, I have these cards, first edition base set hollows, are you kidding me? Then, you know, I can open it up, or if I just want to open to, you know, some of my favorite pages, where it's just all shadowless, you got Charmander, you got the Pikachus, you got, you know, so many great cards that you can just look at. Kadabra, Abra, so beautiful. Seal, one of my favorites. And so I can just look at them, and I can distract myself from the fact that I have so many cards out at PSA right now. But that's basically it. Just make sure that you have goals, and I'm mostly focused on, like, short-term collecting goals, but try and think maybe, I guess, you know, why are you doing this long-term, you know? Are you going to buy a bunch of stuff and then retire and sell it and then go move to Fiji or... Are you gonna buy all your stuff and then sell it and then retire off of your earnings? Who knows, right? But appreciate it and thank you for watching the video if you somehow managed to make it all the way to the end.